Hi, I'm Titlini Hahn, and this is my Greenhouse of Delights. I'm starting off in the greenhouse because it's a little bit showery outside. In fact, it's been showery all week, which has been very good because it means that we haven't had nearly as much Saharan dust around here as people in London who've been choking to death. Anyway, let me show you what I've been up to in here this week. I spent a couple of happy hours during the week pricking out my blue lobelia, purple lobelia and night phlox. <sighs> yes, there are some boring bits of gardening because gardening isn't all about wearing black turtleneck sweaters and rolling around the garden with a spade in your hand. I also pricked out a load of leeks, 30 in fact. Double! <sighs> now you may wonder how I'm able to water such delicate little seedlings. Well, the answer is very simple. I pump up a pressure sprayer and give them a nice gentle shower. Mm, 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 mm. That way my delicate little babies don't get battered by large drops of water. The other plants I pricked out a couple of weeks ago, the Cineraria, Alisum, Stocks and Salvias are all doing very well as well. The tomato plants are looking very healthy, although there seems to be a little bit of an invader in this one. Not sure what that is. And the last thing to show you is my sweet corn. Now then, after three weeks of seeing absolutely nothing, I got rid of the pots and planted some fresh seed. And after one week, this is what I've got. Booyah! I guess sweet corn seed doesn't keep very well from one year to the next. Hmm. Anyway, last week some of you expressed concern about the effect of frost on my butternut squash. Well, don't worry, I'm keeping an eye on the weather and I have a plan in case there is a frost. Not that we're expecting any for at least a week. Anyway, what I wasn't prepared for was something else that happened this week. Upon opening my bedroom curtains, I looked across to where my butternut squash were and saw a blackbird ripping the leaves off it. Have you ever seen such wanton vandalism? Anyway, now they are protected with a nice little chicken wire cage. And that actually helps me when it comes to protecting them from the frost anyway. I'm used to birds pinching the fruit, but destroying plants like that? Anyway, it's time for me to venture out of this lovely, cosy, slightly humid greenhouse and go and plant some parsnips. side of the house I had two boxes like this which are obviously weatherproof wood and I thought hmm I could plant parsnips in one of those I'm glad you agree so they've had a good clean out and I've put a thin layer of rubble in the bottom of the box I'm going to line the sides with plastic and I've just got an old compost bag here good thick polythene I'm not going to cover the bottom, I'm just going to leave the rubble to make sure I've got free drainage. Do, do, do. The idea of the bags is really just to help protect the wood a bit. Just need a second bag to line the ends here. Some of you might be wondering why I don't staple the plastic. Well. The reality is that the staples will rust in no time at all. I can now fill it with compost. I'm just using a generic tub and basket compost for this. No stones, so I shouldn't end up with mutant parsnips. That's filled pretty much to the brim. Then I'll give it a good water. Now I need to sew these half an inch deep. So I'll just make a little drill here. In fact, I'm gonna sew two rows. This is a fresh packet of parsnip seeds of a variety called Gladiator. I'm assuming they're not gonna grow into the shape of giant cotton buds. And then I can just cover them over. 
is good. Now I'll just trim the plastic back a bit. Super! So that's all good then. But if I left it like this, I'm quite sure that somebody would think, hmm, that's a nice looking poo box. So I'm going to apply a little bit of protection. Doesn't need much, just enough to deter certain creatures from deciding that they'll use this as their toilet. There we are. Super. Mission accomplished. Talking of pests, the slugs and snails have been eating my daffodils. Well, I'm not having it. I'm putting some slug pellets down. I know that some of you are a bit sensitive about this, so look away now. <laughs> die, 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 die slugs, die. It's okay, you can look back now. Eat it with custard while we're in the mood. Something that rhymes with custard. So put your first brick in place. Use a spirit level to make sure that it's level in both directions. Now all I need to do is let it sit for three or four days before I give it a good clean down and then get the barbecue going. Now before I go, I must tell you that while I was buying the compost, I noticed that they had some packets of perennial sweet peas. I didn't know you could get perennial sweet peas, shows how much I know. So I've bought some and planted them. Let's see how they get on. Anyway, that's all I've really got time for this week. I'm going to put in an hour's weeding before I finish the day. I don't think you really want to see me do that. But thanks for watching and do join me next time in Titley's Busy Garden. Mm -hmm.